This video is a walkthrough on how to calculate the lengths of different rafters in an equal slope intersecting hip roof. Um, you can see how they were all numbered out here. Um, so we'll start by um, calculating our uh, keys, what I call keys. First, let's start with the screenshot here of all the uh, answers filled in. Um, you'll see for each of these rafters, we are trying to find a run. So we're trying to find the dimension in the horizontal. And then we, using the run, we take that up into three-dimensional plane. Um, and this is, would be the, what we call the line length, so the actual length of the rafter itself. And the keys I mentioned um have to do with the ratio of your common rafters um and anything that comes at a 45 degree angle which could be a hip it could be a supporting valley supported valley um has an all has a different key uh, and that is a function of um the hypotenuse. So you can see here when we mention hip or anything at a 45 degree, um, if this is the rise and run um, of our common rafter, this would be the line length. Then to find the um, length of, of the hip or anything running at a 45 degree angle um, from the building lines, we have to take the run and Recognizing that because it's a 45 degree angle, we have an isosceles triangle, the run in both um, directions here um, to find the hypotenuse, um, which will give us the run of uh, the hip, or like I said, anything that runs at a 45 degree angle to the, um, the walls of the building. And then we would find the line like there. You can see that here the difference in the triangles, right? It's much shorter. Um, hypotenuse for the common than it is for for the hip and you can see here our slope given for this building was uh, 200 rise to 250 run um, so we just take that ratio right away and make that into um, our key finding the hypotenuse um, and we can proportion that off against all the runs that we find for anything that runs at a 90 degree to the building lines. And here we have the hip calculation, which we always have to find um, the run of the hip first using, like I just showed you, the, uh, the run of the common um, twice, giving you the uh, hypotenuse of the run. Um, another way to do this, um, in this uh, video, you'll see me going back to these triangles every time to uh, calculate um, the line length. But you could also take the uh, hypotenuse of each and divide that by the run of each. And it'll give you a ratio. So you could say the common ratio would be 1.28. And then for the uh, for the hip or anything that runs... 45 degree from the building line you could also do the same and you'll have a different ratio of uh, of uh, line length to run I'll just show you uh, and it might be easier for some people to visualize that and use these ratios to calculate so basically you find the run of the rafter that you're looking for and then you multiply it by either this ratio or the one I just had up so that is another option as well so our first um, component of this roof is the major ridge uh, this component here and we have a rule for that um, where we just take the length of the building and subtract the width of the building and that will actually give us the length of the ridge and I have done that you can see the numbers here but how, how that goes down it's right here pretty simple the second Rafter we're being asked to calculate here is the common rafter. And now this math stops here. We're not doing the overhangs. The overhangs will come at the end here. Through 14 through 18 will be overhangs. So the second rafter is a common rafter. And if you know from second year math, the, uh, the run of a common rafter 
is half the span of the building, so we have a span of 6618. Cut that in half, and then take that back to our ratio. So here we have the math done for that. Uh, here's half the span, 3309, and here's our magic triangle, we could call it, or like I said, you could use the ratio. Um, here's our calculation, and we find that the line length of the common rafter is 4155. And now we get to, well, first we're going to try um, a hip jack. So we can call this hip jack one. Um, so again, when we're dealing with the run, we start with the run. If you can recognize here that um, the run of this rafter is the same as the run of the common rafter, but we're going to subtract one full spacing. And that's what we've done here with the math. We call it major hip jack one. There it is. Once we get that run, 2909, we do the same procedure that we did here. And we get that line length of 3653. Now we get to the hip. Now the hip is running at 45 degrees um, from the building lines. So we will be using the hip ratio triangle that we mentioned earlier. Um, our first step should be to figure out the total run of the hip. And if you can see this triangle being made here, we have the run of the common. Because it's a 45 degree angle, this distance is also the same as the run of the common. And the hypotenuse of those two distances will be the run of the hip. And then once we find that, We proportion that off against our hip triangle, which I have here. Or you could use the ratio that I showed you earlier if you'd rather go that route. And our math comes out to 53.75. On to number 5. Okay, 5 is a valley jack because it is hitting the valley rafter. Uh, a little bit more involved trying to calculate this. Maybe you can see here, and I'll just uh, zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can see the length of 5 is going to be the length of the common rafter, or even this common rafter, subtracting this distance here. Now we can't easily figure out that this distance like we did with the spacing, because it's not actually a full spacing. What we need to do is recognize that the distance from this rafter to this rafter is the same as this distance here. And I hope you're able to see that. Let's zoom it. Here's a bit, bit more zoomed in. So if we find this distance, that would be equal to this rafter here. Because of the 45 degree principle, then this distance will be the same. So we're actually going to use um, this distance from the edge of building all the way over to number five. We're going to tally that together and then we're going to take the distance from the building corner to the inside corner. That'll give us the remainder here and then we're going to recognize that that is the same as that and then we'll reduce the run of the major common rafter by that distance. And you'll see that here in the math. And this is sort of all of that tallied up, adding up the two spacings plus the, the run, and then the, uh, the distance from the building. And we actually find there's that difference taken off of the run of the rafter. And we get 2907. Sorry, I got a little lost there. This would be the first bit. So that would be the common plus the two spacing minus the building jog. And that was what was left over. So we're taking that off of the run. And we get 3723 or 2907. And then we put that into our, um, our ratio for common. There's the dog. So the next rafter we're going to be calculating is six. And that will be what's known as the supporting valley rafter. 
it's supporting the supported valley rafter on this side. And if you can see by the picture here, the uh, supporting valley rafter is the same length as the major hip rafter. So our next rafter to focus in on will be number seven here. Uh, very similar to the way that we did number five. Uh, only difference is now we're dealing with the minor roof. Uh, and we're basically going to be stepping off um, the distances here instead of in that direction. Uh, recognizing that um, what we're going to be calculating is this phantom area that would, if that's were to extend all the way down to the plate line, we're going to calculate this distance and we're going to realize that that's the same amount that it's been shortened in that direction as well. So we're going to take our um, minor common run, which is this, and then we're going to be adding one, two, three, four spacings to get us to here. And then we're going to take our building jog distance from here to here, which you can't quite see it in the screen, but it's three, seven, eight, six. And that will give us um, this distance here, actually, is what it will give us. And then that'll be the same as this distance. So let's take a look at how that math goes. Here I have it in words. There's that minor end plus the four spacings. And then we're going to take that building jog off. And what we end up getting was 501 millimeters. And once we get the 501, we're going to take that off the minor end common run, which ends up being half of 53.74, this distance here, which is, would be a full um, run there. And then it's the same procedure after that, um, putting that up against our common triangle, or if you're using the ratio, then you could use that common ratio, you could say, and we get a line length of 2,800. Okay, on to number eight. Uh, eight looks like it could be fairly tricky. Um, so this one, you have to, again, we're going to do it the same way we've been doing, where we're going to add up the distance from the end of the building all the way over to rafter number eight. And we're going to subtract the distance from the edge of the building to the inside corner and we're also going to subtract this distance here, which is half the span. That takes us to here. And if I zoom in on this, um, if you're following what I was just saying, you can recognize that um, this distance minus this distance will be what's left here. And using the principle, again, the 45 degree principle, we recognize that this distance is the same as this. And we have two of those on this valley valley um, rafter. So let's look at how that works out here. Valley valley cripple jack, we'll call it. Um, hitting both valleys, right? It's a valley valley. And there's a bit of a blown up picture of uh, what I was just trying to describe. That one distance, this the second distance I described, the difference between the two would be C, and we have to add two C's to get our run for the valley valley. And that's all written up here. And then once we get the run, it ends up being 515 times 2, it's 1030 is the run of this rafter. Now we're just going to do what we do to all the rest of them. Um, proportion it off against our common triangle and we get 1319. And the next rafter we're being asked to calculate is the supported valley rafter taken to the building corner. Um, and if I zoom out a bit here Maybe we can see that the supported valley is the same as the minor hip, which we haven't calculated yet, so we can do that in the same way that we did the major hip. We will take the run of the minor common, which is half the span, so half of 5374, and we take it in one direction, we do it in this direction, we get the hypotenuse of the run, and 
after we get the hypotenuse, hypotenuse of the run, we will um, proportion that off against our um, our hip triangle. And we can see that here. A little bit of background noise. Apologies for that. Um, there we go. Same calculation for the minor hip. Um, there's what I just described. We get the hypotenuse of 3,800. And that, that is the run for the minor hip. And then we proportion that into our hip triangle. And once we put that into our triangle, our hip triangle, we find that the line length of our minor hip is 4,365. So now we're on to number 10. Um, let's zoom out a little bit here. But it's done in the same way uh, as we've done a lot of these other um, jacks. We're going to find the total distance from edge of building all the way over to 10. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 spaces, plus the run of the major. And we're also going to find um, the length of the building from this corner all the way to this corner. So we're going to add these two numbers up. We're going to subtract this distance from the dis this distance I just showed you. And what you get left over will be Let's zoom that in. Will be the distance from here to here, as if that plate had continued all the way through, and this was a common rafter. And then we're going to recognize that that distance there is also the same as that distance. So we're going to subtract whatever we get here from the run of the major common. And we'll see the math go through here. Valley Jack rafter. Find the run. This is what I just described. Here's the numbers for you. Um, there's your 13 spaces. 572 becomes what remains. So we're going to take that off of the common run. We get 2737. And it looks like I didn't quite complete the calculation here. And the run is definitely not, or the line length is definitely not 35. We've got a run of 2737. And we just proportion that off against our 320.1. This is our common triangle that we've been doing all these calculations with. That should be 3504. Okay. Let's keep going here. On to number 11. Okay, we've already done number 11. We did it in the form of the supported valley. Number 11 is the minor hip. And it's done the same way. So I won't go through that one. Number 12 is what's known as the minor ridge. And if, by looking at the picture, I wonder if you can recognize that this distance here is the same as this distance here. And this distance here, which is 3786. So that's the length of the minor ridge. On to number 13. We've kind of done this one as well. We've had to work it out to figure out this guy here. Um, that would be just a minor common rafter. Um, so we take the run of the common, which is 5374 divided by 2, and just put that off against our proportion triangle. Let's see what the math sheet tells us. There's our minor common. There's the half of the number I just described up against the common triangle or like I said the ratio you could use and there's your line length for the common okay getting down now to the overhangs now 14 and 15 are st very straightforward we have 14 as a common overhang will be the same for anything that uh, isn't uh, intercepted um, and comes off the plate at a 90 and 15 would be the hip overhang calculated the same way we did the the main hips and commons I'll just quickly show you the math. There's the common overhang. The, the projection of, out, out on the horizontal projection from the building is 600 millimeters. Um, so we're going to turn that into um, the line length by using our triangle, and we get 768. The hip overhang is done the same way, like I said. First, we need to find the run of the hip. We're going to use that projection and find the hypotenuse of it, to, and that'll become our run 
that we're going to proportion off against our, our triangle for calculating the hip. And now we get to the uh, valley jack overhang. So it's a valley jack because it's, it is hitting the valley at the bottom. Um, the run of the rafter itself would be the run of the common, but then we have to deal with this little tail, short tail here. Okay, so to calculate that, it's the same way that we've done some of the other jacks. We take the distance from the edge of the building all the way over to 16 here. So it ends up being 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, is it 15? Spacings and the uh, run of the common. And we're going to calculate the distance from the edge of the building all the way to the inside corner here. And what we'll be left with is this distance to from the corner to the to the rafter 16. And if you can recognize again that this distance here is the same as this distance. And that's the run. So we're going to use, once we get that run, we'll do what we always do. Let's just see how the math walkthrough turns out. All right. So here you have what I just explained right now, major common plus 15 minus the building distances to that inside corner. Leftover was 228. I take that 228 and bring it up into three dimensions with our common triangle, and we get a line length of 292, meaning this little rafter tail here is 292 millimeters long. And on to 17. Now, 17 is fairly simple as well. We're trying to calculate this distance here, which is equal to this distance. So all we need to do is take the jog of the building, which is 3707. That's from corner to inside corner, outside corner to inside corner. And then we'll take, in this case, this rafter is coming right off of the, um, the junction of, it, of the hip and the commons. So this distance here is the run of the common rafters. So we take that minus the run of the common rafters will give us what's left over. And again, we're going to recognize that this distance is the same as this distance. So let's have a look at how the math works out. Now, when I originally run the numbers on this, I added the projection. Don't need to because it's a wash. They, they both cancel each other out. So we take that building jog, we take the run of the common, the remainder is the 398. And then we're back to where we, what we're usually doing, bringing the 398 of the run up into three dimensions, um, either multiplying by that ratio of common or using your triangle, and you get 510 for the millimeters for the length of the rafter. Okay, last one here. Same thing, just looked at it in a bit of a different way because now we are on the minor um, roof. But same thing, we are actually going to figure out this distance here and recognize that it's the same as this distance. So the way we'll do that is to calculate the distance to 18, which would be the minor run of the common plus two spacings. And then we're going to take the building jog 3786 from here to here once we subtract the two we're going to have what's left here which is the same as this like i mentioned so as long as you get this concept uh, it sort of repeats itself and you just have to recognize what you're trying to figure out and that there's a mirror that you can kind of use in one direction that will work for the other direction uh, here you have the breakdown of how that works and again you found the run once you find the run, you can get that up into three dimensions, either by using the triangle and the cross multiply and divide, or you could use a ratio. So this is just a walkthrough of how to calculate the lengths of a lot of the rafters on an equal slope intersecting roof. I hope this has helped.